Welcome to section 8.1. All right, gentle people, we're going to be starting at chapter 8 right now. So what I want you guys to understand is that chapter 8 is going to be the culmination of chapter 6 and 7. So I'm going to try to put those ideas together into one grand chapter. Now, the first topic that we're going to be discussing is this idea of buffers. Now, let's go ahead and take water. Now, if I were to go ahead and add a drop of acid, what you would see is the pH of water would drop down. If I were to add a drop of base, what you would see is that the pH in my beaker would go up. Now, instead of having a beaker full of water, let's change that beaker into a buffer. Now, what happens is if I go ahead and add some acid into it, the pH goes down but not as much. And if I were to go ahead and add some base to this beaker, well, the pH would go up, but not as much as the water beaker. And so this is the idea with buffers. Buffers are something that resist pH changes, no matter if you add a strong acid or a strong base to that buffer. Now, buffer systems are used in a variety of places. Most biological organisms are a buffered system. So your blood is buffered at pH 7.4. Our ocean is buffered at 8.1 to 8.3, and that is the pH that most animals function best. Outside of these pH ranges, there's going to be some deleterious effects, especially when we're talking about biological components like enzymes. Enzymes are catalysts in your body, and what happens is they only work in a certain pH range. If you're outside of that pH range, suddenly biological systems start to shut down. Now, we also go ahead and use buffers in laboratory experiments, and they're used to make pharmaceutical drugs. Anytime you need to control pH, you're going to use a buffer system. So if buffer systems resist pH change, even upon the addition of strong acids and bases, how do I make a buffer? Well, you can make a buffer by combining a weak acid and its conjugate base. For example, HF is a weak acid, and then NAF, well, NAF breaks up into Na plus, plus F minus, and this happens 100% because it's a salt, and F minus is the conjugate base of HF. Now, another way you can make a buffer is if you use a weak base and the conjugate acid. So in this case, NH3 is a weak base, and then NH4Cl, well, that breaks up into NH4 plus, plus Cl minus, and so this is the conjugate acid of NH3. What you'll note is to make a buffer, you need something weak, and it's conjugate. So go ahead and take a look at this slide. Tell me which of these systems are a buffer system. Please note that more than one answer could be correct. All right, let's take a look at this. HCl, this is a strong acid, so this can't be a buffer system. H2CO3, well, that is a weak acid, and this breaks up into Na plus plus HCO3 minus. So here's my conjugate base. So this one works. H3PO4 is a strong acid, and so I cannot use this. And then once again, we have acetic acid, and then we have the acetate. So that would be a buffer system as well. So let's go ahead and continue asking some questions. Let's say that I have acetic acid, my weak acid, and I were to go ahead and add sodium acetate in solution. What happens to the pH of the solution? All right, so let's go ahead and see what happens. If I add sodium acetate to solution, this is a salt, so it breaks up into Na plus, plus the acetate ion. Now what you guys will see is this is something called the common ion effect. And what you guys will see is that sodium acetate 
and acetic acid have something in common that they break up. They have acetate. What you have to recall is that this reaction is in equilibrium. If we were going to go ahead and add a product to an equilibrium, well, Le Chatelier says that I'm going to have to shift my reaction. So in this case, I'm going to shift my reaction to the left. If I shift my reaction to the left, I'm taking my products and making it into reactants. Now, that means I'm going to consume my products. So that means that the H plus concentration is going to go down. If my H plus concentration goes down, that means my pH is going to go up. All right, one last quiz question for you guys. Let's go ahead and do that same experiment. What happens to my Ka? All right, gentle people, remember what Ka stands for. It is an equilibrium constant. It is always going to be constant so long as I keep the temperature the same. And so even if I add more product or more reactant, my constant is going to be constant. I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1B.